What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 5 in the Math 1 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question gives us two functions, f of x and g of x, and we're supposed to find the largest integer value of x so that f of x is less than or equal to g of x. Now what on earth does all this mean? We will get to that, um, but first, to do well in a question like this, you'll need to know about function notation and also how to use tables to extend and compare functions. So let's start with function notation. We're used to seeing y equals and y equals here. Um, but sometimes math people like to use different names for different functions, and that's where this whole f of x and g of x thing comes in. It's not significantly different, it's just a way of actually giving them different names so that if we see something like f of x is less than or equal to g of x, then we'll know exactly which functions we're talking about. So let's look at what this is actually asking. What is the largest integer value of x such that f of x is less than or equal to g of x? So essentially, since um, I see x in parentheses here, this means that whatever I pick for x, I'm going to plug it in everywhere I see x in both f and g, and I'm going to compare this, and I'm going to keep trying values of x until I get something where this one is bigger, and that'll help me find the largest integer value where, sorry, I'll keep trying until I get one where this is bigger, and that'll help me figure out the largest integer value where this is bigger. So let's go ahead and actually start on that. I'm going to make a table. I'll call it f, g, and then I'll make another row for x. Uh, let me erase that, get this clutter out of my way. Now I'll start with 1, 3, and 5, just to try these out. So I plug in 1 for x in my f of x function, and this would be 2 to the first. That's 1 half times 2 to the first, also known as 1 half times 2, which is just 1. I plug in 1 for g. This is 5 times 1, which is 5, plus 2, which is 7. So at this point, g is bigger. I need to keep trying numbers. It wasn't going to be that easy. So now I try the number 3. I plug 3 in here. 2 to the third power equals 8, and 1 half of 8 is just 4. I plug 3 in here. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Once again, g ends up being quite a bit bigger. So now if I try the number 5, I plug 5 in for x. 2 to the 5th power, also known as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, is 32, and half of that is going to be 16. So for plugging 5 in right here for g of x, marker's dying on me. This is 5 times 5, which is 25, plus 2 is 27. g is still bigger. We've got to keep trying. Um, how about, let's see, what if I try the number 7? All right, so if I try 7, I plug 7 in for x here. 2 to the 7th power is actually 128, and half of that will be 64. I plug 7 in here. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 2 is 37. So now we're at a place where f is bigger than g. This is what we wanted. This tells us that our answer is going to be either 5 or 6, which we haven't tested yet. So I'm going to test 6 and just see exactly what happens there so we can know for sure what our answer is. I plug 6 in for x in f. 2 to the 6th is 64, and half of 64 is 32. I plug 6 in for x down here. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. Now these are actually equal, but the problem did tell us we were looking for the largest integer value such that g was bigger than or equal to f. So this still works. We would still consider this to be on the side of g of x, which means the largest integer value, such that f of x is less than or equal to g of x, is actually the place where they're equal, and it's the x value of 6. Now, I know that was a lot, including a lot of mental math and working with exponents, but the key to a problem like this is looking at your patterns and reading the problem very, very carefully 
as well as doing the math of actually plugging in the numbers and trying them out carefully. Okay, sorry for that abrupt cut, but I do need to demonstrate how to actually um, respond to this using the graded response form for anybody who will end up taking the paper test of this. My answer was 6. 6 was the biggest um, number that would get me f of x less than or equal to g of x. So this only needs one box. I write 6 in the box, go down until I find my 6 bubble, and bubble that in, and that's it.